who has tended to be a counterpuncher. That's his style. He waited for Leonard, and Leonard really never uh, came to him the way he wanted Leonard to come to him. By its schedule, go 15 for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. And a promo against marvelous Marvin Hagler. Super Bouts continues. But right now, let's pause for a moment. And many in the crowd thought that he was totally dominating the fight, even though Antifermo was continuing to come on. Al has alluded to the fact that the guy out of New York certainly fights with a lot of heart, and indeed, as he's fighting here in round number four in the middleweight championship fight, he continues to show that. It's very tough to discourage Vito Antifermo from coming in, and uh, uh, Hagler already, we can see, hitting him with some good shots, but uh, Vito continues to come forward and press the attack. On five, middleweight, Las Vegas. Hagler again continues to do, I think, Al Bernstein, what he has wanted to do through the first four rounds anyway. He is boxing very well, and from a pulling his way in, as we've seen doing here, but Mills Lane fairly quick to get in and separate these two fighters. Good overhand right by Antifermo. But the best punch for Antifermo, what does he possess? What does he try to score with, Al? Well, that overhand right is one. He likes to go to the body. Antifermo's a pretty good body puncher. He does nothing from an orthodox uh, stance. So most of his punches are punches are clubbing punches. They uh, they come from all different angles, and uh, he gives fighters trouble with that. Some, apparently, there's something wrong with uh, Hagler's glove. It appears to be, apparently, the label on the glove. That'll be easily remedied, and <laughs> now we're right back to fighting. Put some excess tape also there. Yet from a land of that jab a moment ago, he's not been able to get his own jab in at all against Hagler. And he's not as effective on the inside as he'd like to be. Hagler holding on mostly in there until Mills Lane comes in. Hagler, one of those guys that would like to, of course, be the more the boxer of the two. The brawler and Antifermo. But Hagler, once you get him inside, if he gets himself pumped up to fight that way, he'll stand you toe to toe inside. But Antifermo, I think, is well aware of that. Hagler is the taller of the two by only about an inch. Antifermo still pressing forward, taking a lot of counter shots as he comes in, but in this round, he's landed some good right hands like that one we just saw. It's been probably the best round of the fight so far for Antifermo. Absolutely, and at almost a lackluster performance in the first four, not to say that he was not in there gamely fighting, but he had not scored that well. Hagler seemed to be the one that was picking the spots, but now Antifermo starting to find some places where he can score against Hagler. These middleweights are set for 15 tonight. Good combination by Antifermo. Hagler may have slipped a left in, in the middle of that combination, but Antifermo clearly got the best of that exchange. Good indication of how tough it is to discourage Vito. Hagler landed a couple of good counter shots as he came in, but just didn't have much impact. Hagler's landing pretty well on the inside. And Afermo just tries to duck that head, get inside as much as he can, clinch, fight a way out of it. And the uppercut on the inside is an important weapon for Agler. He used it a moment ago. It's a punch he needs to use in this fight. Particularly when Afermo kind of comes in with that head ducked as he does, trying to get down underneath the gloves. You see an example of it right there. And there's the bell to end round number five. And Afermo going back to his corner. This is the champion defending for the very first time. Conversation in the Adafermo camp. Marvin Hagler, you see his last fight. Getting ready to come out for the answer to the bell of round number six. Goody Petronelli in there talking to Marvin and giving him some instructions. Goody and Pat, of course, his managers and trainers. 
did not seem to be as hectic. Maybe we caught it a little late over in the Hagler corner, but everything seemed to be a little bit more organized with Hagler at this point. Of course, at a firm ball, they're trying to, well, as you've heard, try to get him to use that right hand and obviously keep his hands up. He, he landed with the right hand uh, very well in that fifth round, better than he had earlier, but they want to see more of that. And he's not moving his hands. That's what they want. They want him to throw combinations and uh, keep busy on the inside. So, so far, Marvin Hagner appears to be holding his own, if not taking advantage of the champion. And Affirmo, of course, wearing that crown for the first time, getting a little bit more pressure than I think he expected it. But nonetheless, he continues to try to find a brick wall when he try to get in with some kind of offense against Hagler. This is kind of the brawling style that Affirmo wants to go, but Hagler says, well, I can do that too, and does a good job with the combination. There's the hand speed of Hagler, which is so good, and uh, uh, that's where he has a big edge over Antifermo. Undisputed middleweight championship of the world on the line. And we're really picking up the pace in this round. And the difference is he's putting three and four punch combinations together in the last round he's turned one punch. Look at the hand speed. You see him coming off that break and really throws a combination. And I would say probably stored with at least 75% of those punches. Good left, right, slipped in by Anafermo, but answered by Hagler. Antifermo is not a great defensive fighter, but he's not as bad as some people make him out to be. He does slip a lot of punches, but because of his style, he also takes a lot. And of course, the fact that he bleeds so much, uh, though no cuts have opened to this point in this fight, uh, is what uh, leads people to believe he's perhaps uh, worse defensively than he really is. One minute to go. This is in round six. Body shot by Antifermo, and uh, he has not been able to get to Hagler's body like he wants to. In fact, both fighters have been headhunters. Antifermo, you can see just under the right eye, starting to get a little bit of the puffiness, which indicates that left hand of Hagler has been getting in there most of the night. Good right that time, just off the jaw of the champion. 30 seconds to go, round six. Hagler's got that right jab really on, hook, on track as a southpaw, and uh, that's a punch that's giving Vito all kinds of trouble. Vito Antifermo trying to defend his middleweight championship against Marvin Hagler. Final seconds of round number six, and it's still up for grabs in Las Vegas. That was quite a reunion. Oh, Everybody yeah. looked pretty good. A few more pounds, maybe. <laughs> the girl in blue was attractive. Vaseline off the eyes there of Anna Fermo. The champion comes out against Marvin Hagler. Hagler gets him with a quick left. I like some of that off the eyes. That's quickly. A, it's the kind of greeting Anna Fermo's gotten almost every round in this fight. Middleweight championship up for grabs. Good straight right that time by the champion. There's that waiting in style we have seen through the first six rounds so far by Anna Fermo. Answered pretty well by Hagler, however. Once he's in there, Anna Fermo needs to be busy, and in that sequence he was ripping shots. He's doing a lot of holding and hitting Anna Fermo is on the inside. But Hagler, you know, the, the impression of Hagler is that he doesn't like to fight on the inside, but he's landing some good shots in there. You can see, of course, the puffiness around the right eye of Anna Fermo again. Right, graphic evidence that that left hand of Hagler has been scoring almost at will tonight. You know, there's a feeling, Al, that uh, many people, just as you pointed out, feel that the champion is not busy enough, that he has got to start taking a little bit more to Hagler to get himself into this fight and really have a chance to retain the title. Well, we heard his cornerman uh, saying that to Antifermo, and uh, he's trying to get in there. He's landing some shots, and in this round, this seventh round, he's been more aggressive and has moved his hands a lot more. But it's tough for him to get in there and work because he's running into those counter shots by Hagler as he's coming in. We are halfway through round number seven. Hagler, as you can see, kind of dancing. Trying to get himself in, gets inside when Anaferma wants to take it in there. And the combination by Hagler scoring well. 
Hagler's not setting down on his punches as much as I think uh, the Petronelli would like him to do. He's bouncing a little bit too much, I think, in this point. Landing shots, but they're not having as much impact as I think he would like. And he can punch. As evidenced by, of course, so many of his fights around the Philadelphia area. He's really kind of top of that area in, in particular. Uh, be people like Cyclone Hart and, uh, of course, Benny Briscoe, who we mentioned. Kevin Finnegan in Boston, Willie Warren. Those are all good middleweights in that area. People at uh, those fights were wars. And this is one of the reasons that Hagler coming into this first defense, our first try for the championship of the middleweight against the first defense of Anna Fermo. Many felt that uh, Hagler had to be the favorite coming to the fight. And I don't think anything has been dissolved to disillusion that at the moment. Round seven comes to a close. We continue with more of our Super Box after this time up. We know how much you love sports. So what would it take to get you to pick up the phone and order Sports Illustrated? A free... Anticipation here at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas for the champion to get himself into the fight with Hagler. Hagler continues to fight well through the first seven. Not to say that the champion has not had his moments. But Hagler again, somewhat clearly in command here early in the fight. Marvin is landing the uppercut to both the body and the head very effectively. He did that very well in the last round, and he started out in this round doing the same thing. Now you see Anapermo trying to get inside, almost totally off balance though, as he lunged in with the left right. That is one thing about Hagler's style, of course, that very straight up style. He always seems to be very much on balance, in command of what he wants to try to do, even though you pointed out, Al, he's not getting back on that back foot to deliver the good punches so far. Well, it looks good, that's for sure, and uh, it is, by and large, pretty effective, but uh, I'm sure they would like him to set down on his punches just a little more. That has been somewhat of the characteristic of the champion, as you saw that right coming over the top. A lot of lunging, trying to get to Hagler tonight. And I believe the right that time did. Marvin's making him miss a lot. Not making him pay that much when he misses, though. Marvin doing a lot more movement in boxing in this round. Halfway through round number eight. Undisputed middleweight championship of the world on the line. And a firm ball trying to defend for the first time. Hagler getting his first shot as the number one contender in the middleweight division. Judges, I'm sure here, Al, are looking on with great interest on how this fight is going. Indeed, uh, Dalby Shirley, Hal Miller, and Dwayne Ford, the uh, Las Vegas judges. And uh, so far, anyway, uh, you would think that uh, they might have Marvin Hagler ahead to this point. There's the brawling of Antifermo. Got inside, left, right. Not a lot of damage to Hagler. And again, Al alluded to the fact once he gets in there, Hagler at this moment had tied him up to prevent any other action. But Antifermo, as he lunges in there, not able to do too much more damage after he gets inside. Good clubbing left hook from Vito. Starting to pick up the pace just a little bit here and landing more of those shots when he is on the inside. Fermo, the middleweight champion in boxing. Tom Jones, one of the great entertainers, looking on among many in Las Vegas. So we come to the close of round number eight. We'll continue with more in a moment. Great shot, Arnie. You know, breaking. We move to further action on our Super Bouts as we move into round ten. Round number nine was pretty well status quo for both Hagler and Antifermo. Let's move into round ten now. And now, Bernstein, I think it is time for, if there is going to be a challenge by the champion, to try to get back on the scorecards here, it has got to come soon. Oh, I think he's got to pick up the pace. He knows that as Hagler's in between rounds really urging him on. He's got to wage this fight on the inside. That's what he wants to do. And uh, by and large, uh, Hagler has kept it at long range. 
Tony Parmo, one of the things that has come down through his career, I think, Al, is the fact that he does cut. But so far, he has uh, stayed away from that here in the early going. He really has. Uh, nothing serious developing in his face. You can see all the scar tissue and uh, around his eyes. And I'm sure that's a surprise because Hagler's hit him with a, a lot of punches. And there is some heavy swelling, in particular around the right eye, both on the eyebrow and right under the right eye. That left hand of Hagler getting in there most of the night. Hagler still here in the 10th round, very much in command of his fight. Bobbing, weaving, slipping punches, getting them inside, and a firmo, however. You may recall after the first two or three rounds that it looked like Hagler had control. And Afermo scored well in those, say, four, five, sixth round. And then he kind of laid back again with Hagler coming on. And now here, as we're in the tenth round, and Afermo is still halfway through this round, has to be the aggressor with Hagler, I think, maybe having an indication that he may indeed be ahead on the card. Well, he feels that, I guess, because he's boxing. And... Uh he wants to keep this fight, as I said, in the center of the ring, and he feels that boxing that way can earn him this decision. Encouragement from the crowds for both of these fighters. Good exchange inside Hagner, getting a left right to the body of the champion. One minute to go, round 10. Middleweight title fight, Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada. Crowd still anticipating some fireworks. Now they're starting to get more and more. Now they start to brawl as Anna Fermo comes on with the left right after Hagler had hit him with one. And they're hitting as Mel's Lane tries to break the two fighters. This has turned into a war here in the 10th round. And this is exactly how what you thought that Anna Fermo was going to have to do. Is it too late? He comes on in the 10th round here. I don't think so. Well, we'll see. He's uh, He certainly is waging the kind of fight he wants now. Although Hagler also very effective with his punches. So round 10 is not settled yet, but you can see that the intensity starts to pick up. And we'll continue with more after this. Before you buy the new Michelin XA4 all-season radial, remember, every XA4 has 20 million miles of testing behind it to prove it performs like a tire designed for the ring and like a great handling highway tire. And to prove it keeps on performing mile after mile after mile. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Walker Tire Company, proudly serving Austin for 50 years. Once you try Tres Amigos, we know you'll be back. Because at Tres Amigos, we offer you excellent Austin-style Mexican food and will serve you in our unique and relaxed dining atmosphere. At Tres Amigos, we use only the finest, freshest ingredients to prepare our tacos al carbón, our fajitas, and our special puppy tacos. Come experience the Mexican food Austin loves best at either of our two locations, because we know that once you try Tres Amigos, you'll be back. Cannot to answer the bell on 11. He's met by the champion, and Afermo in the center of the ring, and I think after round 10, Al Bernstein, people here are starting to feel that the intensity of this fight is certainly starting to pick up, and there's no question about it now. And look at Afermo come on. He knows that he needs a rally, and so he is pressing the attack, coming on as he was in round 10, and trying to make this an alley brawl, and to some extent, he's uh, achieving that right now. Sam Smith along with Al Bernstein. Middleweight championship fight, Las Vegas, Nevada. Vito Antifermo, the champion against the challenger, Marvin Hagler. Hagler has fought extremely well for this one. Antifermo has had his moments. And now he's trying to press the offense as much as he can here in the late rounds. With round 11, Underwood. That right slip again by Antifermo. Hagler tried to slip it, but didn't have much success. Marvin still boxing. Uh, at the firm one, the last round or two, it certainly got him with more shots than he did earlier. And uh, occasionally landing that overhand right and landing that good left hook a moment ago. Good 
combination by Hagler as he backs away from the champion. Caught him again with a right. Good right hands by Hagler. And there's that hand speed by Martin. Halfway through this 11th round. And a Fermo trying to defend his title for the first time. And he's in a war with Marvin Hagler. They exchange it on the inside. And a Fermo was trying to tie up. Hagler says no way and continues to punch. The fight is on the inside where Anta Fermo wants it. But in this sequence, it's Marvin Hagler who's landing, I think, the more effective shots. But you can't discourage Vito at the front. Give him that. And there he lands a couple of good shots. The size of this man's heart has never been questioned. Also, is an arm punches by Hagler. He's not getting his whole body into those shots, but they are landing good right by him. So the tenth round was almost like throwing a switch by both of these fighters. And now here in the eleventh, with 30 seconds left to go in the round. Intentionally, dry, another adjective you'd like to put on it. They are now trying to do what they can to put this fight in their corner. And a good combination by Hagler just a moment ago. He is teeing off on Anthony Fermo at the end of this round. Closing seconds, round 11. Rod really starting to feel it now. Good straight left by Hagler. Slipped in over the champion's guard there. And the crowd, of course, many on their feet, applauding a very good 11th round. Good look at the champion. You can see now a cut is going to open up under the right eye. That was just in a swelling throughout most of the fight, but now there's definitely a cut under the right eye of the champion. Not in a place that should hamper his vision, however. Not a lot of conversation going on in that corner at the moment.